it's June 6, 2016, when this quiet home in Austin, Texas, becomes the latest addition to the more than one million homes burglarized every year in the United States. He was captured on camera walking from room to room, speeding up as the alarm system kicked on. We see the burglar going about his business pretty much unfazed by the fact that their alarm is going off and didn't seem to be particularly bothered, certainly by household pets. He is on a mission to get whatever stuff he can and get the heck out of there. If you didn't know the context of the video, you would think this is this guy's house. He's looking for something, he lost his keys. He just seems so at ease and so comfortable. With the children in daycare and their parents at work, no one is home but the family dog to watch as the audacious intruder rifles through drawers and countertops before finally making his getaway with pockets full of stolen goods. He's not fussing around. He's looking for small, valuable objects. He's not going to get caught with a TV in his hand. He's very strategic with how he's stealing. The invasion of a family's most personal space is traumatizing. Home is where you're safe. It's where your children go to bed. So the thought of this stranger rummaging through your bedroom is extremely alarming. People feel a sense of, of that they've been violated with a crime like this. As a matter of fact, there are some people who wind up moving from their homes because they just can't get over the fact that someone's been in their house. And for homeowners Megan and Nathan Zellner, the break-in is especially painful. Our son was born in that house. And so it's a very special place. You feel that, that violation, but you also feel that lack of control. Like your house should be the one place that you have the most control over. It's an experience made all the more traumatic as the Zellners watch it unfold in real time on their security camera's cell phone app. Megan calls me up and she said that the alarm company called and the back door had tripped off. And I pulled up my phone and it had the, the camera web app on it and here the alarm going off and sure enough there's a guy walking around in our kitchen. And it was like you have that, that sense of dread of like, oh no, somebody's in my house. You could see him go over and try to fiddle with, <laughs> with the, the code as if he could, could somehow turn it off and then he disappears for about a minute, almost two minutes uh, down the hallway and reappears. I was really worried that my computer would be stolen. As their alarm company alerts the police, the Zellners race home. Nathan is more than 20 minutes away, but Megan is right around the corner. As soon as I saw the alarm company calling, I'm already grabbing my purse and my keys to leave. And so within probably three or four minutes, I pulled up. I didn't want to park right outside in case there was someone there. So I parked down the street and waited. And you know, my adrenaline was just pumping. Like you want to go in, you want to see, and there's part of you that is itching for a confrontation at that point. I thought for sure I would see a car or somebody leaving the house. And I sat there for what felt like an eternity. From her spot down the street, there's no way for Megan to know if the burglar is still inside or how dangerous he might be. Who knows what he has on him? Who knows if he has like a weapon? And what if someone walked in on him? He could have, you know, retaliated. The minutes tick away as Megan waits for the police. And once they arrive, what the Zellners learn about this burglar will send a ripple of terror through their entire community. Minutes later, the police and Megan's husband, Nathan, both arrive at the scene. The officers conduct a sweep of the property, but the thief has already taken off. He had had long gone by that point, so we were able to assess. When the police and Megan and I went into the backyard, the back door, like the frame was all shattered, the wood was all broke. There's just something about seeing your, your house in that condition that was just like, oh, this is pretty sad. He went to where he thought he could get the most bang for his buck. And so he went through our top dresser drawers. And I had a jewelry roll in one of those top drawers, mostly costume jewelry from, from each of my grandmothers. And then he did grab my watch, but I think that's it. He was in and out very quickly. 
but the Zellners aren't going to take this theft lying down. We had the video and we sent that to the detective. And what we did that evening was post the video online. And there was instant feedback. People started connecting some dots. As the Zellner's video spreads on social media and through the local news, more photos and more stories come to light, connecting this shameless thief to at least two other home invasions over the last month. Different homeowner just a few miles away says the same man also burglarized his home. He broke into a house down near San Antonio and was kind of working his way up I-35. Then somebody had posted that earlier in the same day, they confronted an individual coming out from the backyard of their house. And I said, you know, what are you doing at my house? And he goes, somebody was crying in your yard and the dog was barking. And of course, I called BS on that and he got really mad. It was a real confrontation that started getting a, a shouting match. And the guy who, who came out of the backyard got in his truck and tried to run him over or backed out of the driveway really fast. At this point, the upset burglar jumped into his white SUV, rammed it into Bugmaster's truck and peeled out of his front lawn, nearly hitting the homeowner. It felt like, wow, we kind of got it off easy. And the more the Zellners learn, the more they discover just how lucky they really were. Come to find out that this burglar, only a couple of hours earlier, had stolen a firearm. Knowing, especially after the fact that he had stolen a gun earlier in the day, you see where things could have gone much worse. And we were very lucky that he was already gone by the time Megan got home. But this criminal's compulsive behavior is about to become his undoing. They caught him the next day. I think they found him sleeping in his car. Yeah, with a bunch of stolen driver's licenses. Yeah, something yeah. weird like that. When they caught him, it was then very easy to connect the dots to the two other crimes in the neighborhood. The burglar is quickly identified as 32-year-old Randall Lee Laster a known felon with burglary and robbery charges stretching back to 2002. People started learning a little bit more about him, and we kind of were like, took him back. He kept making bad decisions after bad decisions, and we were just a blip on his bad decision train. Laster is charged with unlawful possession of a firearm and two counts of burglary of a habitation. He is convicted on all charges and sentenced to 15 years in prison. Being able to share their video and their experience online has done more for the Zellners than just help catch the culprit. The neighborhood kind of grouped together and put together the evidence that eventually tied him to the crimes and led to his conviction. But for us, it was more of like taking control over a situation that felt pretty violating, getting that community involvement and reassurance. I think it helped us sleep at night instead of being scared of where we live.